like the RAH-66 Comanche, the F-35 of helicopters. While the F-35 stealth fighter dominates headlines today, back in 2004, the RAH-66 Comanche was the most talked about aircraft of its time. But before we dig into the video, be sure to subscribe to our channel for more insightful content on military aviation and defense technology. Now, let's get started. The Boeing Sikorsky RAH-66 Comanche is a prime example of military aviation's lofty goals. The stealthy armed reconnaissance and attack helicopter was created with the intention of revolutionizing battlefield capabilities for the U.S. Army. But after decades of development and substantial funding, the Comanche program finally came to an end. To replace its aging fleet of helicopters, the U.S. Army launched the Light Helicopter Experimental Program in the early 1980s. The design developed by the Boeing Sikorsky Collaboration was selected for the program in April 1991, following years of refining and assessment. The Comanche was intended to perform reconnaissance and light attack tasks by utilizing state-of-the-art stealth technologies and innovative design elements. The U.S. Army initiated the Light Helicopter Experimental LHX program in 1982 with the goal of replacing a number of current rotocraft models, such as the OH-6, the OH-58, the AH-1, and the UH-1 helicopters. The program changed by 1988 to become a reconnaissance helicopter, which led to a formal request for proposals to be sent to other manufacturers. The Army awarded contracts to Bell McDonnell Douglas and Boeing Sikorsky in October 1988 so that they may refine their ideas. The program changed its name from LHX to Light Helicopter or LH program through the 1990s to better reflect its concentration on reconnaissance. The Boeing Sikorsky team was given a $2.8 billion contract in April 1991 to finish six prototypes. This was a big deal because that same month, the helicopter was given the official name RAH-66 Comanche. Beginning in November 1993, Sikorsky's facility in Stratford, Connecticut, and Boeing's plant in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, assembled the first prototype. All subassemblies were then combined for a final assembly at Sikorsky's facility. The Department of Defense cut the number of prototypes from two to one in December 1994. In May 1995, the first prototype was launched and tested in flight in West Palm Beach, Florida. Piloted by Bob Gradle and Russ Stiles, the prototype made its maiden flight on January 4, 1996 successfully, despite early delays caused by structural and software difficulties. Not long after, on March 30, 1999, the second prototype made its maiden flight and entered the flight test program. On June 1, 2000, after proving its capabilities and fulfilling essential requirements, the RAH-66 Comanche entered the $3.1 billion EMD phase. This was a major turning point in the program's development. At first, the U.S. Army intended to acquire more than 1,200 Comanches for use as light assault and scout helicopters. Operational deliveries were expected to start in 2006, as late as 2003. In late 2000, the Comanche's empty weight was lowered by about 200 pounds in order to bring it into compliance with its target weight. The first prototype ended its testing in January 2002 after 318 flights in 387 hours. In the meanwhile, by May 2001, the second prototype had completed 93 sorties and 103.5 flying hours. Later, in late 2001 and early 2002, the second RAH-66 underwent major upgrades, which involved the installation of mission equipment and the addition of more potent T-800 LHT-801 engines. After the new equipment was installed, the second prototype began flight testing on May 23, 2002. Through 2003, the enlarged test program evaluated night vision equipment and weaponry. During testing, some noteworthy accomplishments were a dash speed of 172 knots, a cruise speed of 162 knots, and the capacity to complete a 180-degree turn in less than 5 seconds. 
The Comanche program was significantly restructured in 2002, which resulted in a 650 rotocraft acquisition reduction from the original projected number. Budgetary concerns played a major role in this decision, since the estimated total cost of full production is $26.9 billion. 2003 saw the start of production on the third RAH-66, which was meant to be the first helicopter to comply with the EMD regulations. Eight RAH-66s were slated for construction for operational testing purposes. The first RAH-66s in production were to be supplied in a Block 1 configuration, which included most of the intended armaments and sensors. Later deliveries, starting with the 16th Comanche, would have included the Block 2 standard, which would have included all intended features and improvements. The Comanche's stealth technology, which reduced its radar cross-section and overall visibility, was one of its distinguishing features. The outer surfaces of the helicopter were carefully shaped with facets and painted with infrared suppressing paint and compounds that absorb radar. Because of these actions, the RCS is purportedly 360 times smaller than the AH-64 Apache, increasing its capacity to survive in dangerous conditions. The RAH-66 was equipped with two LHTEC T-800 turboshaft engines, each capable of producing up to 1,563 horsepower, which allowed it to achieve remarkable performance levels. The Comanche was designed for quick deployment to several operating theaters with a 43-foot fuselage length and lightweight composite materials. It even had a ferry range of 1,200 nautical miles for self-deployment in the event of an emergency. The fuel reserve of the RAH-66 Comanche was at least 30 minutes and could carry external tactical fuel tanks, allowing it to operate for up to three and a half hours without refueling. With its cutting-edge mission systems and avionics, the Comanche could carry out reconnaissance flights in any kind of weather, including at night. Other attack helicopters, such as the AH-64 Apache, found it easier to identify and acquire targets because of its sophisticated sensor suite. The helmet integrated display and sight system and digital fly-by-wire flight control system improved situational awareness and operational efficacy for the crew. The payload capacity of the RAH-66 Comanche included a standard armament of one 20mm XM301 three-barrel cannon in the chin turret. Additionally, the helicopter had optional internal bays that could carry six Hellfire anti-tank missiles, six Stinger air-to-air -air missiles, or 24 Hydra 70 2.75-inch air-to-surface rockets. With optional stub wings, the Comanche could carry even more ordnance though at the cost of reduced stealth capabilities. The operational requirements for the RAH-66 Comanche included the capability to self-deploy at least 1,260 nautical miles with a minimum of a 30-minute fuel reserve. The helicopter was designed for strategic self-deployability, emphasizing its ability to travel significant distances independently. The RAH-66 Comanche differs from the AH-64 Apache significantly in various aspects. Firstly, the Comanche was designed with advanced stealth features, providing a low radar signature that made it less detectable compared to the AH-64 Apache. This stealth capability was a key distinguishing factor between the two helicopters, enhancing the Comanche's ability to operate covertly in enemy airspace. In contrast, the Apache lacked such stealth characteristics making it more visible to radar systems and potentially more vulnerable in certain operational scenarios. Secondly, the role and mission of these helicopters set them apart. The RAH-66 Comanche was primarily intended to function as an armed reconnaissance helicopter tasked with locating enemy forces and designating targets for other aircraft like the AH-64 Apache, especially in challenging weather conditions using advanced infrared sensors. On the other hand, the AH-64 Apache was predominantly an attack helicopter focused on engaging and destroying enemy targets directly, showcasing a different operational emphasis compared to the Comanche. Lastly, regarding speed and design evolution, the RAH-66 Comanche 
boast at a maximum speed of 330 km per hour, or 172 knots, outpacing the AH-64 Apache. This difference in speed showcased varying performance capabilities between the two aircraft. Furthermore, while the Comanche was developed as a next-generation reconnaissance helicopter, with a strong focus on advanced technologies and stealth features tailored for its specific role, the AH-64 Apache had a longer service history and underwent upgrades over time primarily to enhance its combat effectiveness without the same level of emphasis on stealth capabilities as seen in the Comanche. However, the decision was reached by the U.S. Army on February 23, 2004 to end the Comanche program. With this declaration, an expensive and ambitious project that had cost close to $6.9 billion in funding came to an end. The Army stated that a number of improvements were required to guarantee the RAH-66's battlefield survival against contemporary anti-aircraft threats. But rather than continuing to develop the Comanche, the Army decided to use the money to upgrade its current fleet of helicopters and advance the development of unmanned aerial vehicles to replace the Comanche's initial purpose of reconnaissance. The Army Reconnaissance Helicopter Program was the U.S. Army's attempt to produce a second battlefield scout helicopter after the Comanche program was terminated. As a result of this campaign, the Bell ARH-70 was chosen to replace the OH-58D and was developed accordingly. But the ARH-70 program also had its share of problems, including cost overruns, which led to its termination in 2008. The decision to discontinue the RAH-66 program was influenced by several factors. The development schedule was extended as a result of a negative feedback loop created by attempts to speed the program and accommodate annual budget constraints. As a result of decreasing the quantity of helicopters bought, unit costs increased, which incensed opponents of the program. Unrealistic expectations, technical difficulties, and concerns about the program's profitability further hampered its chances. Thinking back on the Comanche program's justifications and lessons learned was motivated by its discontinuation. The program's costs could no longer be justified because of concerns regarding its doctrinal relevance, strategic airlift requirements, and cost effectiveness. Sikorsky and Boeing, the manufacturing team, blamed issues on uncontrollable variables such as budget constraints and changes in requirements. Even though the Comanche program was canceled, its lessons were learnt and rotocraft technology has continued to advance as a result. Reuniting to create the SB-1 Defiant, a prototype for the Army's future vertical lift program, Sikorsky and Boeing are demonstrating their ongoing innovation and cooperation in the military aviation sector. So, what do you believe were the key factors that led to the cancellation of the RAH-66 Comanche program? And how could these challenges have been addressed differently to potentially ensure its success? Share your insights in the comment section below. And thanks for watching.